This is just a quick explanation of the commands that MMFS bring to the Turbo SPI. Now, one thing to consider with MMFS is that it carries over many of the commands from Acorn DFS2, but also adds a number of commands that are specific for manipulating SD cards. And the assumption I'm making is that you've just installed your MMFS ROM and your Turbo SPI adapter, and you've just copied a whole bunch of disk images onto your SD card using MMB Explorer, and you're just about to do this for the first time. So if you're a seasoned Beeb user, this is not the video for you. If you're like me and we're out of a loop for about three decades and are trying to catch up, this might be of some use. Or if you're a noob or just want a bit of a refresher, then this could also be useful. I'm not going to go through the commands in alphabetical order, rather I'm going to go through them in an order that I believe has the most appropriate flow. First things first, let's see which commands are available under the dutils suite. Now dutils is the extension that I just mentioned that allows MMFS to talk to SD card style devices. There's actually an explanation of what all this does on the MMFS GitHub page. And if you want to find out how the old commands work, then there's a link in the description to an Acorn DFS manual from back in the day. Now the MMFS and Turbo SPI setup offers four virtual drives. So in order to see what's on these drives, use the D drive command. So we can see here you've got drive zero, one, two, and three. By default, you'll go to drive zero. So if we use the catalog command, you can see there that um, I changed this to drive two just prior to filming this and Muggins here didn't actually reset. So it defaults to drive zero unless it doesn't. Let's do that again. So when you switch the computer on, it will default to zero. In order to change which drive is the active drive, you use the drive command, which is an old DFS command. So not D drive, D drive shows you all the virtual disks. Drive actually changes which drive is being worked with at the time. So let's go back to drive two. There we go. If you're not sure where to begin in terms of which disks you've got on the system, then the dcat command is really helpful because this is effectively a catalog of all the disks. So as the cat command is a catalog of all the files on a disk, dcat is a catalog of all the disks. So with dcat, we can see that we've got, well, 511 disks here, but of those, only 263 are currently in use. By the way, in case you're wondering, that p means that the disk is protected, which I understand has something to do with write protection. So let's say that's too overwhelming. You've got a rough idea of a disk you're trying to find, but you don't know exactly where it is. Let's say you just remember that it's somewhere in the first 20 disks on the card. So you can do a decap between one and 20, and that will just show the disks in that particular range. Now let's say, for example, you know what the disk is called. You get a fairly good idea what the disk is called but you're not 100% sure, you can actually look at all the disks with DCAT under a wildcard type situation. So let's say you're looking for all the disks that have got MMFS on them. So let's look for all the MMFS disks. And we can see here that there are four disks with four different versions of MMFS on them. Now of all this messing about, I've completely forgotten what's in each of the drives. So let's go to D drive again. Let's see which drive we're currently using. Okay, we're currently in drive zero, that's awesome. Let's say we want to change into a different disk. Now let's say I want to change to disk 300 again, like in a previous video. There we go, that's disk 300 with a bunch of utilities on it. Let's say we want to change to a disk where we actually know what the disk is called rather than what the number is. Now bear in mind with DFS, a disk title can have a maximum of 11 characters and it's case sensitive. But let's say I feel like having a nice game of Elementum. Now I know Elementum's on its own disk, so we'll insert disk Elementum and make sure we've done that. We certainly have. If you're working with software disks or games disks, a lot of the time they'll be bootable. And you can tell this one's bootable because you've got 
exclamation boot sitting there. So if you want to boot that up, that's pretty simple. We just type in the dboot command and you need to specify the disk or the disk number. So in this case, I'm too slack to type out Elementum, but we do know it's disk 253. And we can enjoy a nice game of Elementum, or at least we could if I didn't have the rest of this video to make. Oh, by the way, if you want to check out Elementum, there'll be a link in the description. Now, I've already seen how many disks are used. What we want to find out now is how many slots we have available for new disks. So with this, we can use the D3 command. That tells us that there are essentially 248 out of 511 disks that are free. Well, that is to say they're unformatted. The DOP command is quite powerful. It does a number of different disk operations, hence the name DOP. One nifty feature is that the DOP command can find the next available unformatted disk. And that's by using the N parameter on DOP. Now bear in mind this disk will not be formatted when you load it, but that's not a big deal. There are a couple of ways you can format this. You can either format it in the traditional way. In fact, bugger it, I reckon I'll show you how to do that because it'll give me a good opportunity to show you another part of a DOP command. So you format it either the traditional way, which is to effectively the form command, set the number of tracks and drive zero. And that's exactly what you'd use if you were still using an old timey floppy disk. Or you could use part of the DOP command as in another parameter in the DOP command to format it way quicker than that. But in order to show you that part of it, I need to unformat this disk. So with the DOP command, that is the switch K, K for kill disk, which is what that does. Specify drive zero. Now it prompts you twice just to make sure that you're not going to stuff something up. Go, that's the first check. Kill, type in yes again. Of course, if you get second thoughts, you can always just no, break, whatever. And we go to catalog and surprise, surprise, disk isn't formatted again. Not a big deal. Just go to DOP R0. Now I'm not sure what R stands for, but effectively it formats the disk. And you can see here that the disk is now formatted. If you don't believe me, I'm just going to write a very quick program. There we go. And if you still don't believe me, let's break. There we go. You can also use DOP to protect and unprotect disks. If you need to refresh a disk table for some reason, there is the dRecat command. I've no reason to use it right now, but just be aware that the command is there. Whilst this isn't strictly an MMFS command, this is a command you'll probably need to get used to, particularly when you've got so many disk images on the go, and that's the title command. Going back to our example with disk 5, now I'm not even sure what it's called, if anything, but it's somewhere between disk 1 and disk 10. So we've got disk 5, which we want to put in the drive. There's no title on it, which could make, could make it a bit harder to find. So let's call it something. Let's just have a look at the catalogue. That might give me some inspo. Okay. Now, of course, the assumption being is that that is the disk that's in the drive. Still disk, just make sure I'm still on drive zero. There we go, so it's got a name and another sanity check. Of course, you don't have to use a wildcard to find a disk with DK. If you know what the disk is called, you have to find it straight away like that. I mean, obviously, that's probably a bad example because we've been working with that for the last few seconds. But let's go back to Elementum again. So there we go, 253 Elementum. The last thing to go through, which is specifically related to, yes I am cheating as if I'd remember all this off the top of my head, is the dabout command, which just reminds everybody who 
is responsible for all this stuff. And Martin Mather, you are a king amongst men. That's actually quite a, not a very long story, but a vaguely interesting story attached to this, which is on the GitHub page. I'm going to go treat myself now to a quick game of Elementum. And until next time, see you later.